we got to record. Okay, right. So, um, what do we know here? We know the current, which is our I. We know T. Okay, and then we can find the mass of copper. Okay, initial mass and final mass. So that means the mass of copper produced in this setup. So this calculation is related to our electrolysis um, calculation. Now, if you know I and T, that means you need another expression, Q is equals to I T. Okay, so first I want you to find Q equals to I T, where the T has to be in seconds. Okay, so I'll let you do the calculation. I have the answer straight from the mark scheme. So I'll just check with you if we agree, if you agree with the answer. Uh, make sure that you change the current is okay because it's already in amperes. Uh, the time is the problem because it needs to be converted to seconds. And then because we also know the mass of copper, we can find the number of moles of copper using mass of copper over AR of copper. I can tell you that the AR of copper is uh, 63.5. Another thing that you will need is the half equation for Copper, copper two plus half cell. So I'll just put it somewhere here, maybe. Hello, we are and Ayman. Thank you for joining. If you can, uh, Ayman, if you can switch on your video, that would be great. We are is here. Ayman is here. Who else has one already? Um, okay, one, two, three, four. We are still missing four people. Thank you, Hana. We are now looking at question number five, okay? For those of you who just joined, question number five B part two. Okay, so your charge Q, the amount of charge or the amount of electricity passed in your um, electrolysis system should be 900 coulombs. Did you get that? Okay, thank you. And the number of moles of copper that you produce in this um, setup is uh, 4.7 times 10 to the power of minus three mole. Okay, so to find the mass of copper, you need to, to uh, subtract the final mass minus the initial mass, okay? Did you get 4.7 or 4.67 times 10 to the power of minus three mole? Okay, now, um, so we're done with Q equals to IT. The next expression that we are interested in is F equals to LE. Obviously, you can calculate your L um, if you know your F and if you know your E, okay? E is a constant in your data booklet 
which is the charge of a single unit of electron. Okay, it is 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. That means we are we have to find F. Okay, we do not want to use F um, as the constant given, but we can find F from our equation. Okay, so just to remind you, F is the charge per one mole of electron, whereas E is the charge of a single electron. So there's a difference, okay? F is the total charge of one mole of electron. E is the charge of a single unit one electron. Now from the um, half cell equations, you can see that if we want to produce one mole of copper, we need two moles of electrons, okay? So that's why I have um, uh, taken the half cell equation here, okay? So based on the equation given there, to produce one mole of copper, I require two moles of electron. Okay, and here I only use, I only produce 4.7 times 10 to the power of minus 3 mole of copper, okay, and the charge or the electricity used to produce that amount of copper is 900 coulombs, okay? So this is what, this is the, the actual charge or the actual electricity that I use in my setup. And by when I use 900 coulombs, I could only manage to get 4.7 times 10 to the power of minus three mole, okay? Now, so if I want to know how much I need to, how much charge I require to form one mole of copper, it would be X, okay? As I said, I am not going to use Faraday's constant F as, a cons um, the, as the value given. So I'm going to calculate my own Faraday's constant, okay? So I want to know the electricity or the charge required to form one mole of copper, okay? So this one I put aside first. Okay, that X should be 900 divided by 4.7 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So this, you should get a big number. X, so it should be in Kuloma. 191489 Coulombs per one mole of copper. Okay, but I want to find F. If you go back to F, F is the charge per one mole of electron, right? Now, this is where the relationship one mole of copper requires two moles of electrons, okay? So that means to form one mole of copper, I require two moles of electrons. Okay, so I'll just move that. Okay, so what does this tell me? The charge required to produce one mole of copper is the charge for two moles of electrons. Do you agree? Yeah, because if I want to produce one mole of copper, the charge based on my ratio is 191489. 
and in my half cell, half equation, to form one mole of copper, I require two moles of electrons. Okay, so that means this charge is equivalent to the charge of two moles of electron. Okay, to find charge of one mole of electrons, which is, by the way, Faraday. Yeah, Faraday is the charge of one mole of electron. I will divide that number 191489 coulombs by two. Okay, so let's see if that number looks familiar. Nine, five, seven, four, five coulombs. Okay, and the Faraday's constant that you are familiar with, the value is 96,500, which is close. Close, right? It's not exact because, um, again, it depends on your experiment, but this is the experimental value of Faraday's 95745. Okay, so to go back to our question, what the question is asking for, we want to find L um, by rearranging our F equals to LE expression. Okay, L is equals to F over E. Our F has to be the experimental F, not the one that is given um, from your notes. Right, because if you use that, then what is the um, point of carrying out an experiment? Right, so experimental value of our Faraday's is 95745 coulombs. E is the charge of a single electron that cannot be found from the experiment. So, that one, that value, you can find from your data booklet, it's the electronic charge with the symbol E. The negative is just to show you the charge of electron, okay? When you use it in calculation, you will ignore the negative. Otherwise, you will get a negative number. So 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. Hopefully, we will get something familiar because L is Avogadro's constant. Hopefully we will get something close to six times 10 to the power of 23, although it will not be as accurate. Again, for the same reason, we are using experimental results to find our Avogadro's constant. 95745 divided by 1.6 to the power of minus 19. So I got five, 0.98 times 10 to the power of 23, which is close to 6 times 10 to the power of 23, okay? So that is how you use electrolysis to find Avogadro's constant, okay? So it is lengthy, the process is lengthy, but you just have to, do, to use the data or uh, the results from a practical or an experiment to find your L, okay? So, so sometimes in your notes, I believe in your notes, I give you the steps, uh, step one, step two, step three. But this is an example where they do not give you, they do not guide you with the steps and they just say, okay, now you have to find L, okay? But if you refer to the, to the notes, I have already broken down the steps for you. Okay, if you are done with that, we will move on to the next question that I want to do together, which is, okay, if you're not done uh, copying this down, you can take a screenshot now because I will change the slide. Otherwise, if you're done, then you can, uh, we can move on. Done, screenshot. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is question six. This is an example where uh, they give you 
um, they, they've broken down the question, okay, into smaller parts. Okay, most of the current passed through the cell is used to dissolve the copper at the anode and precipitate pure copper onto the cathode. Okay, so we're talking about mass of copper. However, a small proportion of it is wasted in dissolving the impurities at the anode, which then remain in solution. Okay, when a current of 20 amperes, so always highlight the given information, passed through the cell for 10 hours, it was found that 225 grams of copper was deposited. Okay, calculate the following using the appropriate data from the data booklet. Number of moles of copper. So that is quite straightforward. Number of moles of copper is mass over AR. Again, the AR of copper is 63.5. Okay. Okay, uh, number of moles of electrons needed to produce this copper. So same thing, okay. Um, you need the half cell, half cell equation of copper. Okay, so it says number of moles of electrons. If you look at the equation, I'll just paste it here. If you look at the equation, for every one mole of copper, two moles of electron is produced, okay? But in your experiment, you didn't actually produce one mole. I believe you produced 3.54 moles, correct? Did you get that for the first part? Okay, so that means if you produce one mole of copper, uh, sorry, producing one mole of copper requires two mole of electrons. But in our experiment, we managed to produce 3.4 moles of copper. So how many moles of electrons is required for our experiment? Okay, so that's the kind of relationship that you need. Okay, so that answer should give you um, number of moles is 7.09 mole. Did you get that? Okay, so it matches, right? If you get one mole of copper, you require two moles of electrons. If you produce 3.5 mole of copper, you would have used 7.09 mole of electrons. Okay, right. Uh, next, number of moles of electrons that pass through the cell. Number of moles of electrons that pass through the cell. So that means uh, you want to know um, how many electrons, how many moles of electrons is associated with the charge that you have um, in the electricity that you used, okay? So you notice that we haven't used the amperes and the time, right? So first we want to find Q equals to IT, bearing in mind that your T has to be in seconds. So please find that first. Q equals to IT.
you should get 7.2 times 10 to the power of 5 coulombs. All right, so where are we going with this? Actually, we have to find um, two uh, amount of um, electricity charges. Basically, we want to find two numbers, okay? So we want to know how much mole of electrons is associated in this um, amount of charge, okay? So just to remind you that one mole of electron is 96,500 Coulomb, okay? So we want to know in this amount of charge, how many moles of electrons is it associated with, okay? So uh, if 96,500 Coulombs is the charge of one mole of electron, okay? How many moles of electrons is associated in uh, seven to um, seven two times ten to the power five is four zero. Okay, so we want to find how many moles of electrons is associated with this amount of charge or electricity that we use in our setup. So X is equals to um, 96,500. Okay, I'm missing one zero. Did you get 7.46 mole of electrons? Did you manage to get that 7.46? Okay, all right. So they want to calculate the, uh, the charge, uh, a small proportion of it. What is it? Current, the current that is being wasted. Okay, so you notice that we have the uh, number of moles of electrons, 7.09 moles. And the electricity or the current that we choose uh, that we use is 7.46 mole of electrons. Now, mole of electrons is just another way of looking at the amount of charge because we know that um, that, that electrons carry charge. Okay, so when we produce 3.54 moles of copper, which is what we got in our experiment, we actually only required 7.09 mole of electrons of charge. However, in our setup, the electricity actually gave us the current that we can get in our setup is 7.46 mole of electrons. So you can see that we did not use all the amount of electricity that was provided to us in our electrolysis setup. Yeah, can you see the difference? 7.09 is being used for our reaction to produce this amount of copper, but actually we are provided with 7.46 moles. So that difference in value is actually used for to dissolve the impurities at the anode. Okay, so we want to find the percentage that was used in dissolving the impurity. So basically the amount of current or the amount of charge that was not used to produce copper, okay? It was used for something else in that electrolysis setup. So to work out this value, we have to take the bigger number, which is 7.46 minus 7.09. So you can view this as charge, amount of charge. So this is amount of 
charge. It's just a different way of looking at it, okay? This is also the same thing. It's amount of charge provided by the um, current in the electrolysis, okay? So 7.46 minus 7.09 over 7.46 times by 100. Okay, you should get a percentage. So how many of you have got 14 of you? Uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, eh, 13. 15, 15, 16, 17. Caution is also here. Right, so you should get an answer between uh, 5% like that, okay? So that means not all 100% electricity that was supplied from uh, the power supply in your electrolysis is being used to produce copper. Some of them is being used, maybe some of them um, is lost, okay? Or some of them is being used to react or dissolve other things, okay? Or to electrolyze other things. Okay, so that's what the question is. It's a little bit, um, the part two is, is not so uh, related to chemistry, but it is part of the question. And sometimes they, they like to throw in uh, questions that they think is, you know, requires common sense. Right, um, the next question that I want you to try is question eight, okay? So we don't have enough time uh, to do it together now because um, I'm using the, the normal Zoom, but you have until 8.45. Uh, our class is until 8.45. So I would like you to try question eight, the calculation, okay? And the nice thing about question eight is they try to break down the questions into parts, okay? So they will help you. So just try to follow uh, the question. I think the first part, calculate the number of hydrogen molecules, that's fine. Just remember that uh, one mole of gas occupies 24,000 centimeter cube, okay? So that's what you need to uh, calculate the number of moles of gas. And then calculate the total number of electrons transferred to produce this number of hydrogen molecules. Okay, so I will just get the half cell equation required H, oh, it's here. Okay, so the tricky bit about this question is calculate the total number of electrons. Okay, that means If you produce one mole of hydrogen, you require two mole of electrons, okay? So the number of, um, number of electrons means, okay, for example, moles of hydrogen, you've got it as 0 0.01925, okay? So if we got 0 0.01925 mole of hydrogen, how many moles of electrons is required? Okay, so that I will be cut off anytime soon. So I'll just try to do this quickly. Um, so we require 0 0.0385 mole of electron. 